When we are talking about the war between Russia and Germany, we think of images like these and associate Russia with being victorious and Germany with being the loser. However, did you know that Germany actually won a war against Russia? And that war was concluded at Brestley in 1918. So how did the Germans defeat the Russians in the First World War? Was the victory on the Eastern Front in World War I a true victory? Keep watching to find out. Hey, welcome back regular viewers and if you're new, my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher who likes to hustle history for you and if you like it as well, please consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video comes out. The Russian army mobilized on the 31st of July 1914 and in the following month, the Russian invasion of East Prussia began. The German town of Gumbinnen was captured. However, one Russian army suffered a tremendous defeat at the Battle of Tannenberg and another Russian army was kicked out of East Prussia after the Battle of the Missourian Lakes. Seems that the Russians were on the losing side here. The Russians were victorious at the Battle of Galicia where they captured the Austro-Hungarian city of Lemberg, current Lviv. Battles of the Carpathians continued well into 1915. In May that year, a combined German and Austro-Hungarian offensive led to the defeat of the Russians in Galicia and they had to abandon the region. In the summer of that year, the Russian high command ordered the Great Retreat, where the Russians retreated in order to shorten their front line. And this was a huge morale blow for the Russian army. A year later, in the summer of 1916, the Russians launched the Brusilov Offensive and it was initially successful. They captured a belt of 60 kilometers of enemy territory. However, Brusilov had great difficulty with maintaining his supply lines and soon the offensive came to a halt and the Russians were pushed back. It also proved to be a very costly offensive. It had 1 million Russian casualties, according to historian John Keegan. In February 1917, a revolution took place in Petrograd, current St. Petersburg, and a provisional government took office. The leader of this government, the socialist Kerensky, ordered the July offensives in the summer of that year, also known as the Kerensky Offensive. However, it became a disaster. After initial success, when they tried to capture Lviv, the Russian army was halted in their tracks and soon pushed back. It was a nail to the coffin of the Russian army, as historian John Keegan wrote. For two days, the attack went well and several miles of ground were gained. Then, the leading units, feeling that they had done their bit, refused to persist, and those behind refused to take their place. Desertion set in, and worse. Fugitives from the front in thousands looted and raped in the rear. When the Germans, who were forewarned, counterattacked with divisions already brought from the west, they and the Austrians simply recovered the ground loss and captured more themselves, driving the Russians back of the line of the river's bridge on the Romanian border. The Russian army disintegrated. Counts of soldiers dropped their weapons and went home. One battle was fought at Riga, where the German armies were stopped by the Latvian riflemen in order for the Russians to retreat. Riga was taken on the 3rd of September. In November or October, according to the Russian calendar, the Bolshevik Revolution took place. Now Lenin and his henchmen took power in Petrograd and soon in Moscow as well. Soon after, December, Peace talks followed in the city of Brest-Litovsk. At the end of that year, an armistice was signed. In January the following year, the peace talks were resumed. Ukraine signed a separate peace with the Central Powers. Now, mid-February, Bolshevik Leon Trotsky walked out of the peace talks with Germany. And thus, the Germans launched Operation Faustschlag. They advanced into Soviet Russia and this went pretty easy as German commander Hoffmann wrote. The mess in the Russian army is much greater than I expected. Nobody wants to fight anymore. Yesterday a single lieutenant and six of our men took 600 Cossack prisoners. Hundreds of guns, 
cars, locomotives, wagons, a few thousand prisoners, dozens of division staffs were rounded up, all without any actual fighting. Soon, Tallinn was captured as well as 1,500 Russian guns. Minsk followed, Narva followed, the Germans kept at cave, and they could walk all the way to Petrograd practically unopposed. Now in a way we can say that this 11 day campaign can be viewed as a separate war because it was now Germany fighting or basically walking into Soviet Russia. But in that sense we can also say that the battles that took place after the February revolution where the Romanov dynasty was replaced by the provisional government can be viewed as a separate war. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Anyhow because of the rapid German advance Bolshevik leaders Leon Trotsky and Vladimir Lenin knew it was no point in fighting the Germans any longer. And thus, on the 3rd of March, the peace treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed. Russia did not have to pay any reparations and POWs were being exchanged. The biggest loss was in terms of land. Russia was forced to give up most of its territories on the continent of Europe. Poland, Courland, Finland, Estonia, and Lithuania were all given nominal independence under German protection. Soviet troops were to be evacuated from the Ukraine. All in all, it had been calculated that the Soviet Republic lost 34% of her population, 55 million people in all, 32% of her agricultural land, 54% of her industrial enterprises, and 89% of her coal mines. As a European power, Russia in economic and territorial terms had been reduced to a status on a par with 17th century Muscovy. Germany had won big time here. It could now transfer troops from east to west for a possible breakthrough there. The question is, did Germany actually won on the battlefield? And the answer is yes and no. True, the Russian revolution definitely contributed to Russia leaving the war. Not necessarily the February Revolution, but definitely the October Revolution. Actually, did you know that the Germans facilitated Le Lenin's trip to Petrograd? Now, once in power, the Bolsheviks tried to postpone the peace treaty with Germany as long as possible. But it was no use because the Germans could walk all the way to Petrograd and even Moscow. And the Russian army was already disintegrated to a large extent. A victory is a victory. However, at the end of the year, Germany would found its demise at the hands of the Allied powers. Now, thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Henry Clarkson, Cool and Castleman, the president, Michael Nozak and One Bad Cookie. If you want to support me, please go to the link in the description. If you want to help me grow in this channel, please share this video via social media, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, you name it. If you want to know more about the First World War, I have a whole playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Auf Wiedersehen.